Ryan Bailey, and welcome to my senior project. I'm going to be talking about life from a different perspective. So a little about who I am. I grew up in Bedford my entire life. I've lived here since I was born. Um, I'm a Boy Scout. I've spent my childhood, most of my life, doing that. I'm an Eagle Scout now. Um, I love the outdoors. I love camping. I love hiking. I love snowmobiling, being outside, things like that. And this past high school year, or actually the entire year, I rode for Bedford Crew throughout the entire throughout all of high school. For the project, basically my AOK -okay was I spent three days in a wheelchair, um, and I really focused on basic spinal injuries and things like that. Um, I really got my idea to do my AOK -okay in a wheelchair from watching a wheelchair basketball game. I was watching TV, just flipping by the channels, and I saw that, and I watched it for a little bit, and I thought, hmm, I wonder. That really got me thinking. It was really interesting. So my outside expert, unfortunately she couldn't be here today, but she's Laura, she's on the left here. Um, she's the one who provided me the wheelchair and she was a huge help to me. I could not have done this project without her. She was a huge help. Um, for her expertise, she's the manager of the rehabilitation therapy department at the UVM Medical Center. So she was very experienced in her field and she really knew what she was talking about and how she could help me with my research and gathering knowledge for this project. So for my EQ and sub-EQs, my main essential question I was going to answer, and I am answering now, is what is a spinal injury and how can someone adapt their life to it? My sub-EQs follow as how does one carry on their everyday life while being made, well, excuse me. How does one carry on their everyday life while maintaining wheelchair use? How does the use of technology improve someone's mobility with a spinal injury? And what are stem cells and how are they significant? I'll be answering those throughout the presentation. So, what is a spinal injury? Basically, so from your brain running down your entire back, you have what's called your spinal cord, right? And so it's basically a communication network where your brain sends signals and pulses through nerves throughout your entire body so you can sense everything from your bone, from your arms, from your legs, and things like that. And one, really, one thing that really helps me understand what it is, it's similar to a telephone where if the cord is like your spinal cord, and if you were to cut it, there would be no communication. So if you think this as your brain, if there's no communication, the phone won't work. So in comparison, if you were to have sustain an injury from your spinal cord, whether it's fully severed or depending on the injury, you may lose some function below that injury. And this is a picture just diagramming the different vertebrae and some of the different functions of it. Um, generally, like where it is on the spinal cord towards the top, it's gonna to be more of the head, upper body, um, thoracic nerve, the thoracic vertebrae is gonna be um, chest cavity, chest, arms, um, lower part is gonna be your legs, and then your sacral nerves are gonna be bowel movements and all that. So, the future of technology, um, I looked into what is called an exoskeleton made by Rewalk Robotics. So it's basically a, like you've, you've all seen Iron Man, it's basically like a suit that straps to you um, and really helps you, helps you walk. Um, it's the first suit to be FDA approved, and basically that means it's safe to market to the public. Um, so basically how it works is you have a backpack with a computer and battery and all the software to uh, work it, and you have a watch on your wrist to control the movements to say walk or go or stop or sit. And so it has motors in each of the joints, it has supports, so it helps you walk and replicate human motion. And you have, um, I guess, crutches to help you, to guide you and keep your balance. So I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really big innovation in this field. Um, Come up with stem cells. So what a stem cell is, it's basically a cell that can become any type of cell. All right. So from the picture, you can become red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, liver cells, brain cells, um, nerve cells, things like that. Um, there are two types of stem cells, embryonic and adult. Embryonic stem cells are from embryos and adult stem cells are throughout your body that can be harvested from blood, bone marrow, things like that. Um, and it's relatively a new science. It hasn't really been proven too much in humans to really have a significant impact, but it's on the rise and it's upcoming. And it's a very significant aspect that could really help out this field. So for my application of knowledge, again, I spent three days in a wheelchair at home in school and various places around town. Um, I ran into many obstacles throughout this process. 
Um, right off the bat, it was very frustrating for me, just trying to move around and do the basic tasks that I could no longer do. Um, some of the obstacles I ran into, I did it in February, so there was icy terrain trying to roll um, from the parking lot to school or around the outside because the wheels would get covered in snow or water, ice, and it was very slippery and it was, there was not much traction. Um, one of the other obstacles I ran into was the school. Our school is actually very good about that. Um, the doorways are wide enough, there's elevator use, um, the hallways are wide enough. Um, but the lunchroom, um, it was fine getting into the lunchroom, but I wasn't sure where to put my lunch tray. So if you have to use two hands to move around, you gotta put it on your lap, have a friend carry it, and then try to navigate through the lunchroom to find a table through those densely packed tables and chairs and people, it was a challenge. So I found that bringing your own lunch is probably the best solution. Um, I went to the grocery store at Hannaford's, and right off the bat I realized that that was a challenge as I could only reach some of the items on the lower shelves. So that was a challenge, and some of the checkout lines were busy and packed, and it was tough to navigate at times, and if there were people all up and down the aisles, it was a challenge. Um, one thing Hannaford's does have, which is very helpful, you can order everything online and show up and have it picked up so you don't have to navigate and go around through the, throughout the entire store. So that would be a significant um, benefit to going shopping. That would help it that'd make it easier, I guess. Um, and one thing that, one of the major obstacles I ran into was really living at home. Because there are some things that I couldn't do because I didn't have the proper um, equipment or the right um, rooms in my house. Because obviously I couldn't, I didn't have the right shower, so I couldn't really take a shower with a wheelchair because my house wasn't set up for that. So there were a couple times I had to, I guess, cheat my way around because without doing extensive renovations, I wouldn't have been able, or I would have to do extensive renovations in order to accomplish this and really be in a wheelchair full time. So, and I can say that this whole process was really life changing. I'll never look at a wheelchair the same way again without experiencing some of the challenges that I experienced in it. So it was really breathtaking. All right, so this is a, this is a picture of a wheelchair. And this is a short video of me getting into the car. A lot of people ask, how do you get to school? How do you get home? How do you get around? So this is a short video of me getting into my mom's car. And there's no sound. So. This is the best way I found to get in and out of the car. Again, this is the wheelchair my outside expert generously lent to me, which is a huge help. And time to this is. Tim Morris, he's in the audience right now. Um, my outside expert encouraged me to talk to someone else, and also Mrs. Cooney actually helped me talk to him and communicate with him and told me about him, and he really helped me out with my project and helped me out with my research and a little bit more about the topic. So this is a short video describing him a little bit. Uh, but it's possible. It's tough, but it's possible. We wheelbarrow 
uh, through the course, we um, uh, I crawl and, and then we do some carries through the rough terrain, which is which is really the hardest part. Uh, the obstacles are the fun part. Anybody can do these races. If I can do these races, you can do these races. Uh, then they're difficult. You want to prepare for them. But you want to you want to come out and test yourself because once you test yourself, you will realize that you're capable of a lot more than you think you are, and hopefully that opens up a whole new world for you. On July 27th, 2014, <laughs> they left in 9 a.m. 9 a.m. heat and crossed the finish line in just under 13 hours. They battled 29 obstacles over a grueling 23 kilometer course on a ski hill. To secure their place in Spartan race history. We are out here to uh, show people, to prove people what's possible if you really want something. No matter how long it takes, if you have the patience, the work ethic, you can do and be anything that you want to do in life. Once you test yourself, you will realize that you're capable of a lot more than you think you are. And hopefully that opens up a whole new world for you. So, that really spoke to me when I first saw that video, and it really made me realize that it's not a, that, that, um, <laughs> um, it really spoke to me that, um, it's not that, <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. Um, again, the video really spoke to me, it really inspired me, it really made me think that, like, just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean that your life's over, it's not a punishment, it's no means a disability whatsoever. You can do anything you want to do. Um, and so I interviewed him, I emailed him, and asked him a few questions about what inspires him personally. Um, things like helping people get healthy and active, he really thought that really inspired him every day. Um, one of his other goals in life was to accomplish the Ironman Kona, the World Championship of the Spartan Races, I believe. Um, some of the, I also asked him about some of the daily challenges he also faced, since that's a, one of the topics I was discussing. Um, basically, like everyday tasks, anything you can think of, like getting ready in the morning, um, going out in town, getting around, you have to plan extra time into that part. Um, getting ready to go to work, to school, anywhere, going to the bathroom, where it is, things like that. And public perception, because um, you don't want to see you want to see the person, their personality, not what they look like, not what they are, not how they act. Yes, how they act, but like you want to see them as a person, their personality, not what they look like. And so that was a big part you wanted to stress. Um, I also asked what are some of the physical activities he likes to do, and again, obstacle course racing, so Spartan races, Tough Mudders, things like that, that really challenged him and showed him that, and showed everyone else that he can do whatever he wants, and he wants to be who he is. So for my takeaway piece, um, I decided to make wheelchair cookies. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do originally for a takeaway piece, so I brainstormed with my senior project class, and they all came up with this idea. And so I thought it was a good idea. Um, I will not be a pastry chef, I can tell you that. Um, so the main thing I want, to take, I want you all to take away from the takeaway piece is that realize that a wheelchair does not mean someone's disabled. You shouldn't look at the chair, you should look at the person who they are. So, some of my closing thoughts. This whole thing, for me, it goes way beyond senior project. I learned so much. I really feel like it really changed who I am, made me think about 
seeing a wheelchair differently because I experienced some of those challenges firsthand. Even though it was only for three days, I really saw some of the basic difficulties that would have been run into. Um, and I really got to see a whole different perspective. Things I never would have seen ever if I had never done the senior project. Um, just things from moving around the house, carpets on the floor, because we have wooden floors in the house, trying to go over every single rug and carpet. The chair would get caught and stuck in the doorways of my house aren't quite wide enough, you can just barely squeeze in and navigating. There was a lot of things that you wouldn't think every day would be a challenge. Just getting up in the morning, um, getting dressed, eating breakfast, getting to school, um, any minor thing you can think of is, was really just difficult and it was very frustrating for me at times, but I just threw it. Um, and throughout my research, I looked into the Paralympics and I really thought that was interesting how many people participated in the Paralympics and I was really impressed. This person, he from the waist down, rowing arms only the entire race. He's a four-time gold medalist, which really amazes me, and I think that's very impressive. Um, there are swimmers, there are archers, there are many sports you can think of that are in the Paralympics, so I was very surprised about it. I was very impressed. I, I thought that was very cool. So here's my work slide, sighting slide. Um, I used most of these resources. Originally, I went to look into um, sports injuries and things like that, but I realized that would be too much, but I realized that um, I found out in my research that because of contact sports that a lot of younger kids, first and second graders, are starting to do football and hockey and contact sports, they're getting a lot of more injuries and that's a real significant cause of spinal injuries, along with um, later in life, the car accidents or any trauma to your spine, the fall, the uh, impact. Um, yeah, a lot of these, these, resource, these resources were very helpful. Um, I, didn't really know much about any of them, so these really helped. Um, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you all for you for coming out. Thank you to the panel. Thank you to my parents for videotaping. Thank you, Maura. And thank you very much, Tim. You are very helpful to me. Um, I guess thank you very much. Thank you for everyone coming out. Does everyone, anyone have any questions? <laughs> what was most frustrating for you? I guess Realizing the fact that like I couldn't get up and use my legs, so many times I want to just get up and walk to the fridge and get something off the top shelf, but I had to realize I can't. I need to ask for help. I need to do something else to get that. Were there any things around the school that were frustrating to you? Can oh yes, um, the science rooms. There are handicap accessible chair or sinks, but none of the tables I could fit under. I had to barely squeeze under. That was the only thing I ran into. Just surprised. So that was interesting. Was there any part like um, of your body like that was affected most by being in really different Yeah. Um, for me, like, has anyone ever been on a long car ride, say a 10-hour drive or something? Mm -hmm. You're sitting so long and it hurts after a while. My lower back was killing me in t after a while, so it was very stiff and sore just being confined in the chair. So. Do you think people still look to you differently? I did the best I could to tell people about it because I didn't want to go for the sympathy aspect. I was going for the social experiment aspect of it. So I made sure that people knew that I was going to be in a wheelchair. It wasn't a freak accident or something. That I, it was just for a senior project. So. But some people were surprised. Like, oh, what happened? What you, what's going on? Um, did you end up using any like adaptive equipment to help you like, reach things or anything like that? Um, not really, no. My parents helped me out a lot with that. So, other questions, comments, concerns? Thank you very much.